couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which I want to discuss a very sensitive yet important subject, which is a bit debatable, and yet it seldom comes up. And it has to do with three different ways in which guitar students are being lazy with no fault of their own. Meaning that it's the method of teaching and modern technology that actually kind of lazies up the guitar student's learning process and it kind of hurts the student's um, progress as a musician by making things a little bit too easy on them. And I want to explain what I mean. The three ways in which guitar students are being um, unintentionally lazy are these. Too much use of a capo, zoom ins, Okay, I'll explain in a moment, okay, bear with me. And fixed patterns, okay? The third one is the most important one, um, but let's start with the over, uh, overuse of a capo. You can play almost anything on the guitar without using a capo. If you're using a capo, then you're actually confining yourself basically to the basic open chord positions. And that kind of narrows down and blocks your view of the neck and your view of what you can actually do with the guitar neck's logic. Okay, because the notes on the guitar neck repeat themselves um, throughout. The same notes, the same exact notes, not octave uh, apart. And when you use a capo, you kind of terminate that option right away and you confine yourself to a very, very fixed guitar sound, which is basically the basic guitar sound, just higher in pitch. Okay? Do you get what I'm trying to say here? So it's a very, very important thing if you want to make real progress on the guitar and understand the guitar's logic by trying to play everything you can without a capo because you can form any, okay, any chord, any sequence of notes with your fingers alone even though you're only using four of them because you can also use open strings and that's very very important and when you have a capo on no matter where the capo is on you're immediately terminating that option. Now the correct use of a capo is if you have a piece um, you want to play and you want it to be in a very, very specific key in a very, very specific expression. But you can't know that unless you tried um, without a capo first. So rushing to put a capo on just to change the key makes you lazy because you can change the key and play the different chords without the capo. Okay, Try both approaches before you settle on a capo, okay? Now, zoom ins. People always write me and ask me why I'm not zooming in. And the answer is actually very, very simple because you don't have zoom in in real life, okay? When you see a guitar player play, when you're in the audience and you watch a guitar player on stage, or if you uh, see a really good busker on the street, you don't have zoom in cameras, you don't have different angles, you can't see his guitar and his fingers from up close, you, you don't, you know, you, you, you can't put your face up there, you know, up close and personal. So you have to train yourself to just look at a guitar player and understand what they're playing by their position on the neck and watching what their fingers are doing and watching what their fingers are doing on the other hand. And you have to train yourself to watch and be able to decode and transcribe without zoom ins. You don't have zoom in in real life. So why, why confine yourself to um, the up close angle, okay? Um, you, you want to develop the skill of watching another guitar player play and immediately understanding what they play because you can watch their fingers and know what they're playing from a distance, even, you know, from across the street. Just by knowing where they are on the neck, you can deduce what they're playing. 
Okay, and you can't develop that skill if you rely on zoom ins all the time. That's why I never use zoom ins. Um, other than one uh, video, I had one video in which I used zoom ins because it was a specific technique I wanted to show. But when you're teaching music on the guitar, you want to develop the skill of watching a guitar player no matter how far they're standing from you and being able to transcribe and understand what they're playing without technology. Now, the third, um, the third lazy making um, thing has to do with fixed patterns. If you have fixed patterns, then your playing is fixed into patterns. Okay, um, I have another lesson in store uh, talking about how pros view the guitar as opposed to amateurs. And the, the straight answer is that you have two different types of music in every composition. You have the, um, the front notes and you have the background notes. And the background notes are the patterns. They're the, the chord patterns, the arpeggios, the rhythmic patterns. But what's important is um, to maintain a sort of freedom around the background notes so you can actually play around with the music. If you have fixed background notes, then those fixed patterns become the front notes. And then you just have to overburden yourself with thinking about everything at the same time. And that's not, that's not how professional musicians do it. Professional musicians think about the chord they want to play and the notes of the melody, the important notes, the, the front notes. The background is up for grabs, okay? Unless you have a fixed composition, but even fixed compositions come from experimentation. And if you have fixed patterns all the time and you never experiment with different fills between the melody notes, then even composition becomes very, very difficult. Um, even if you're trying to compose very simple patterns. So I hope, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay? Because if you're fixed on patterns, then you'll play your playing will become uh, fixed on things like this. Okay, or um, something like this. Okay, or. Okay, which is a good thing, but then when you want to add to that, you don't know where to put in the notes because, hey, I'm playing a fixed pattern, so now I have to recalculate my counting. And the whole purpose of becoming a professional musician or, or a competent musician or a competent amateur is not having to think about the counting, right? And if you're playing a fixed pattern and you want to make a change, you have to start counting all over again. I hope I'm making myself clear. Um, if not, then watch uh, the difference between the way amateurs and pros view music, in which I'll go more in depth into this very issue. So um, I just wanted to share my thoughts with you. Uh, you may agree, you may disagree, but this is the way I see things, and um, I want to share that with you. Okay, just another piece of knowledge. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.